So in this video, we are going to cover the Amazon software testing interview questions and answers. So we are going to give you the top interview questions that are being asked in an Amazon interview and how you can answer them. Let's say if they ask for some particular test scenario. So what are the possible test cases that you should develop high level at the time of interview so that you, you are able to clear the interview? OK, now let's go through the question. So write test cases, write test conditions and test data to test an app which has login and sign up screen on a mobile app. And once you click on sign up or login, it takes you to a website to fill the remaining details for sign up or to perform any activities post login. Now the high level keywords that uh, you know you can take, you can get the clarity to develop the test data or the test cases are that it's a mobile app testing. Secondly, there are two pages that you have to concentrate on. One is login and another is sign up screen. So let us develop the test cases for login first. Now th this is uh, pretty, you know, same as we have for other login pages, irrespective of whichever the application it is. Valid username and password, invalid username and valid password, then valid username and invalid password, then try multiple times with invalid username and password. Try with empty credentials. Try with SQL query. Okay, then provide valid or invalid credentials and click the sign up link. Then what happens? Do you get any message or something? Then multiple user login at the same time. Then before clicking the login, shut down the backend or registration service that, that they have and click the sign up. What do you see any validation message at that time? And then you have to check in various mobile brands and versions. OK. Now for sign up, it could be uh, clicking on the sign up link and filling the valid details. And then the other use case is filling the valid details of already existing users. So the system should identify this user already exist. Then click the sign up link and don't fill any mandatory details and just click on submit. And then it is a positive test case. Click the sign up link fill only the mandatory details and check it. Click the sign up link and fill invalid data. So these are the various permutations and combinations that we are playing up with this form. Then register the user and check the login for the same user. Register the user successfully. Delete the user at, in the database and try to log in with those credentials. Then, then before clicking on the registration details, just shut down the uh, registration service or put your uh, device or mobile out of your network and try to click on the sign up button then check the sign up feature in different again different mobile brands and versions then try to pass the sql query okay so these are the test cases that you can develop next question is you are a part of a team that develops push notifications on an app that is it can be android or ios the push notifications are sent out for ad advertisements published by a marketing team from a data source that they own. Come up with the test scenarios on a high level. Okay. Now over here you so over here you have to develop the test cases for a push notifications on an Android or it can be on an iOS app. Now uh, you can consider an example of any application. Let's say it is a Gana.com and you have installed it on your mobile so you might be getting some of the ad notifications on your mobile so you have to test them okay now let us first test push notifications okay so how you will test them first of all let us look at the positive test cases install the app and enable push notification then push notification should come then you can also check by disabling them. So you should not get any of the push notification. Then install the app and enable notification, but delete the data source of the marketing team. OK, either you can delete or you can shut down and then you can see how is the behavior of the uh, app. Then install the application and enable push notification. Open other apps and check if those push notification are getting in those apps. OK then click the push notification that just popped up now you would have received some push notification then you have to click on it okay is the ad is properly coming up over there 
and then you can also check by closing the push closing the push notification pop-up and check it it should not play you have to again check in various brand or version of mobile phones it can be ios it can be android then close and open the app and check for notifications uninstall and reinstall then check for whether the notifications are being saved or what happens whether you are getting duplicate notifications again and again disable the network take the mobile out of the network and check for the notification expected is there should not be any notifications okay because you have already it's the app is not in the network okay so it should not give you any notifications from the cache another thing you can do is you can call the user who has just installed the app and then you can try sending the notifications now then you can check if the notification is still accessible okay then you can check the notifications on various things like you know you can uh, use mobile data you can use wi-fi you can use hotspot you can keep your mobile at uh, airplane mode at a low network area what happens when you are driving in a car then remove the sim card and test the app notifications then turn off the sounds turn the sound and check notification that whether you are getting the sound when the notification is coming okay then some app have premium and general users so check notification for all such user based conditions let's say if someone is super admin someone is just a normal user generic user then check if the location based notifications work let's say if you are in some particular time zone and then you uh, take the mobile in another time zone so how it is working then point an invalid incorrect data source and verify notifications okay and if there are many notifications which have not been read by the user then check if all the notifications are working properly as per the screen size there should not be any usability issue over there enable bluetooth and check the notifications perform multiple actions on mobile like play audio play some game and see if you are getting the notification at the back end you have to make sure that the notification uh, are not getting disturbed at those scenarios okay next question asked was test cases for refrigerator now we will develop usability installation and functionality test cases and the performance test cases for this refrigerator so first of all usability means you have to check the size dimensions of the fridge okay if they are as per the specifications check the color if they are as per the requirements check the texture interior color material durability you can check the hinges of the doors that is uh, the common door and the freezer by opening and closing the doors multiple times continuously you can check if the interior can be cleaned easily because many a times we see the design of the refrigerator is so compact that it becomes very difficult for a user to clean it so it should not be such check the overall weight of the fridge check the uh, various sizes of the slots that are available inside the fridge to keep the things okay then check for sustenance of the shelves with the allowed weights and disallowed weights installation and functionality testing cases means uh, you have to connect to the power power button and check the length of the wire that is and also the size of the plug pin if it is adhering to the requirements then material of the wire also and plug pin they should both should be durable and color of again you know the power cable and the wires functionality as we all know uh, you can check the cooling for each setting you can check if the light is working as per the manual you can check uh, if it switches off while closing the door if it switches on while opening the door check the brightness of the light check if the light is producing heat when the door is open for longer time check the condensation feature in performance testing we will check the fridge can handle slight variation in voltages as compared to the allowed ones and check the voltages for which the fridge might fail to function and then one of the test cases open the fridge and you can keep it open for long hours and check how it works okay next question was there was a bug caught in production why it was not caught in the QA at the time of testing and what was the reason so this is a scenario that uh, you were testing some functionality you have given a green flag and it is released now it has gone to the production the customer is using it now they have found some bug in the production so so they are asking why it was not caught in the qa side 
so these are the possible reasons that you can give so first of all the test environment is different from the production environment let's say you are testing on an environment and it was a load balancer with uh, it was uh, without a distributed environment let's say load balancer was not configured but in production environment they are having some load balancer okay or you might say that uh, the permissions on the production environment are, are not there let's say if sometimes for the functionality that you have tested or you have developed there is some permissions required to a particular service and that service is not running that service is not up because that access privileges is not there on the production environment hence the functionality is not working fine there can be few reasons like of memory limitations as well let's say uh, the functionality that you have developed has needs 16 gb of uh, ram or kind of a configuration which is not available on the production environment okay that might be one of the reason elb timeout that is elastic load balancer timeout that is uh, the minimum time duration for which the you know time of session is configured is less compared to what should be available for that functionality to work properly then there might be an issue regarding time zone server time let's say you have tested in ist time zone they need it in utc time zone and hence there is some changes of the functionality let's say if it's a functionality related to the scheduler of the scheduler feature is there you are you are scheduling some of the things to happen to work them properly but due to the time zone issue it is not working properly so this might be a possible reason so basically the intention behind asking this question is not that they are asking you whether you have failed any time in such kind of things or not but they want you to think analytically and how you will start the troubleshooting once you get an issue in the production side okay now one more question is the various testing that you can perform for a game over here it is angry birds game that was asked it can be any game okay so you can you can divide the whole testing strategy one is you can take take the smoke testing first that is you can cover on different platforms with different hardware specifications you can cover with uh, various uh, time and resource requirement okay and you can you can do a smoke testing on the whole game you can go through various options and you can see one more important testing is backup restore and upgrade testing let's say you are backing up the data and you have you are uninstalling the app which in which you have registered from one user and then after one month you are again coming up with the same user so your data should be maintained okay whether the restoration of data is happening properly or not okay then you need resource and time requirement for that as well so so you can create a test plan as well that okay i need so and so resources i need so and so time for this testing then continuous testing for hours it is reliability testing what if a, a user is playing the name playing the game continuously for one day two days up to seven days in a week and you can plot the result on behavior from it okay then next is performance usability and comparison test cases so in the performance you have to test how it takes the memory of how much it does it take the memory of the mobile when it has been played continuously for an hours for usability testing you can keep like cover what is the ui ux of the game is it user friendly is it easy to use is the user getting confused because of the design it is made on the game okay and uh, so so to to map these test cases it would be helpful for you if you simply you know compare the game also with the any other game that is available in the market so then you will be able to compare the features as well and uh, you can also suggest the development team that so and so feature was there in xyz game so why not we uh, take you know, why not we why not we involve the same type of feature also in this application so that users are also getting happy with it so this kind of suggestions this kind of enhancements you can bring in okay now next question was there are two particular host host a and host b host a is a ftp server it is a linux box 
and host B is an FTP client on a virtual machine. Now host B is continuously pulling 800 terabyte of data from host A. And if the file transfer is stopped, so how will you troubleshoot this issue? Okay, so over here it is very important to know that host B is taking data from host A. There are two hosts. So one, one is the various obvious reason is of the network thing, network connectivity. Let's say if the network would have stopped. So that can be one of the reason. So I have mentioned all the possible reasons over here. Check the network connectivity to the target system. Then check if there is space available at host B. Now let's say host B is taking all the data, but the configuration or the space is not there in host B itself. Then what you will do? Then check if the file is in use by some other process. Now the file which is being you know, transferred that is already open or already been used at host A. So then it can, there is a possibility that uh, the file transfer might fail. Okay, next is test cases for testing the browser extension. Um, and over here, it was a Google Chrome browser extension to be very specific. Uh, and you would have seen, you know, uh, when we use the Chrome browser for automation for Selenium, some or for any other automation things, we install some of the extensions on Google Chrome. So how would you test them? This was a question asked in an Amazon interview. So you can start with the positive scenario to see the shortcut of the extension on the Chrome browser. Okay, then you can test the enable and the disable, disable functionality of the extension as well. Okay, then you have to test it on various Chrome versions, at least last six to eight Chrome versions that are available in the market. Then you can also check the auto update feature of the Chrome browser, let's say, your Chrome browser was updated to some XYZ next version, then whether the extension was added successfully and whether it is enabled now. Also, um, many a times it happens that the performance of the browser is getting affected due to the due to the extension being introduced. So you can test that performance also by opening the several windows on your machine. So these were the test cases for testing browser extension. Now there is one more, uh, there are many more test cases, but as a part of the exercise, I would give you, how will you troubleshoot if the Amazon site is slow? So this is the one question that you have to take up for an exercise and you can pen down all the test cases or the high level test scenarios that you think of, you know, why the Amazon site has got slow. And you can send us the test cases, the test scenarios in the comment section of this video. So I would really appreciate if you take up this exercise because it would help you to start analyzing the situation and you would be, you know, uh, getting a habit of creating the, of developing and thinking the high level test cases, test scenarios during the interviews as well. Okay. So thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for more videos.